So, today's topic is section 12.5, Arc Length and Curvature of Space Curves. We have been working with space curves and we have looked at how uh, we can compute their limits, we can investigate them for their continuity, we can investigate when do space curves intersect, uh, and we have no looked at two notions of intersection, intersection at same place, same time, and intersection in the sense that the paths intersect. And then we have also seen the derivatives and integrals of space curve. Now we're going to look at one practical application that we might be interested in knowing about a space curve. Given a parameterization, so it traces out a curve in three space. How long is the, that curve from a given t value to another t value? Okay, so given r of t, a vector valued function, which is x of t, y of t, z of t, and let's say t is between a and b. Okay? So the question is how long is this curve? Okay. I think I'm running out of the marker there, so I'm going to switch the marker. So here's the way we compute this. And some of you in one variable calculus might have already seen how this is done for plane curves, where the parameterization only gives you two components, x of t, y of t. Okay? So basically the idea is that the length is the integral from a to b of the absolute value of the derivative of this parameterization. Uh, not the absolute value, sorry, the vector length. Uh, I shouldn't have said absolute value. I mean to say the vector length dt. Okay, so this is the way we calculate this thing. Now, <clears throat> let's take one example and do the, uh, actually do this calculation so we can see how you do this actually. Let's take an example here. <clears throat> so let's say you have the, the helix or the spiral that we have looked at this example many times in class. Cosine of t, sine of t, T. Okay? And t is between 0 and 2 pi, let's say for now. So it's just one, one turn of a helix. Right? Let's draw the graph of this roughly to see, see an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, when t is 0, this is 1, 0, 0. So here, and then it, it comes up. Right? So it's just one turn of the helix going from 1, 0, 0 to like this point is 1, 0, 0. And this point is at 2 pi. So it is 1, 0, 2 pi. Right? So the question is, let's calculate how long is this. So how are we going to do that? So let's first thing, what do we have to do? We have to find the, the tangential vector, right? The derivative vector of this parameterization, also called the tangent vector. So let's find that. So r prime of t is cosine t is negative sine t sine t is cosine t, and derivative of t is 1. Okay? We first find the tangent vector, the, the derivative. Then we find its vector length. So the, this is going to be sine square of t plus cosine square of t plus 1 square, all square rooted. How much does that equal? Cos <coughs> sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. So this is square root of 2. Okay. So the last thing we will do, now we will integrate the square root of 2 dt over the endpoints of the t interval that traces out the curve. So t here is confined between 0 and 2 pi. So this goes from 0 to 2 pi. So this gives us... <coughs> square root of 2t evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So when I plug it in, you just get 2 pi square root of 2. Okay. So this shows us one example how we would use this calculation to actually compute this thing. Okay. We know there are a number of issues we need to look at with respect to arc length so that we really understand this topic well. And we'll continue that in the next lecture.